heavyweights take notice. W would you really? I mean, you guys, it's so hard to respect you guys. I respect the heavyweight class for nostalgic reasons. I respect it just because that's the same belt that Hulk Hogan had. That heavyweight belt, that's the one that Mike Tyson had. That's the one that George Foreman and Muhammad Ali had. Outside of that, I don't know where this respect come from. You guys don't have the sense that God gave geese. And you're not as stupid as I like to tell people you are. Like you're, you're genuinely not that stupid. You're scared. You're just scared. And that's a hard one for me. Like, at what point did you realize that? Was it not the first day when your father sprung for some gloves and took you to an MMA practice, was it? Was it as you got your purple belt, worked your way up to the brown belt? What was it as that first amateur fight was actually going to be here? A commission's going to check your gloves. You're going to get into a cage. Grandma, Aunt Sally, they can all show up. Like, at what point did you realize that you have fear and that you don't want to do this? It can't have just been a new phenomenon because John Jones is in the division, right? I mean, all of you guys should have grown a set of balls the second Francis gets removed from the division. I, I mean... Sports history, any division, any way you want to do it. When the kingpin falls, for whatever reason, maybe he retired, maybe he got hurt, maybe he left the division. Everybody gets stronger. We're seeing it right now down at 205, just by example. John Jones leaves 205, and boy, did we have a bunch of guys stepping forward, banging their chest, and you know what? Turned out they were right. I'm really glad that I happened to listen to those five or six guys. We have incredible parody down there right now. Look what Michael Chandler did. Michael Chandler, which, by the way, my favorite fighter is Frankie Edgar, but Frankie Edgar is or is about to retire. I'm going to need to find a new favorite fighter. That's going to pain me. I've come this journey all the way with Frankie. But if he leaves and I'm still a fan, i got to get a new favorite. Michael Chandler's stealing that spot for me right now. And it's not because of his punches and his kicks. It's not because he gets a, a, a nice tan and makes sure he does his hair up. I appreciate those things. It's not even the call-outs that are winning you guys over. It's the strategies within the call-outs. He's not grabbing the mic, talking trash, saying your mama's fat. He's not making jokes like that. He's calling out very specific guys that he could get. Look, he came out with one today. He said, hey, Oliveira, wait for McGregor. You just get over there and just wait for Connor. You deserve it, and it's what you want. But you, Islam, come see me. Now, that's interesting. There is nobody being called out Islam Makhlchev. That is a literal statement if you remove RDA. And you have to almost remove RDA because RDA never told us why he was calling out Islam in the first place. Those two got something. It's oil and water, but they've never let us, the audience, in on it. So I'm going to comfortably tell you, nobody calls out Islam Makhlchev. Well, Michael Chandler did. Why? Not because he said that's an easy fight. He knows sure as hell it's not. He made his play himself of getting in there with Oliveira, of getting in there with Conor McGregor. He sees the writing on the wall. That's not going to happen. So when you can't get what you want, you go all in on the next best thing. And if you get a hold of Islam and you get the jump on Islam, you go forward. And forward, the way Chandler laid the map out, will either put you in the lap of Conor McGregor or Charles Oliveira. So he gets exactly what he wanted. Michael Chandler gets exactly what he really wanted. He just found going to have to do one thing first. And what's Islam going to say except for yes, Islam's a badass. Islam is a true badass. But now guys are trying to come out, I think it even might have been Islam, come out and said, no Chandler, if you want something to do, go fight Benny. I don't hate that idea. I think that Benny and Islam are interchangeable mediocrities. They both got these beautiful records. They can't command the media just yet. They don't have the social media power or the interest in learning some of that prowess. If they walked in and slapped you right now, you might know it was Benny. You might know it was Islam. We're fight fans. He looked kind of familiar. So there, you really are painting these two guys with the same brush. Two guys that are very clearly the number one contender. One of them's got eight wins in a row. One of them has seven wins in a row. I mean, it's just something insane. They were supposed to fight each other. Joe Rogan decides he doesn't want to see the fight. Dana White tells us that, but doesn't tell us any other detail. And all of a sudden, it looks like that fight's not going to happen. And the mere fact that Chandler could see what time it was and go strategically. And he didn't just do it for himself. 
He managed the rest of the board up too. Now Oliveira, who really does want to fight Connor, just got some support. He just got some backing. I'm sure the champ is going to appreciate that. When you're an adult and another adult comes up and defends you, it's a very rare thing, but it's a very special thing. So Michael Chandler laid out a case today, which, by the way, you can't poke any holes in. There was nothing easy about that. There was nothing underhanded. All of that makes perfect sense, and it's something that we would love to see. That's what he did. Meanwhile, at heavyweight. Right? I mean, it's just one of these. Meanwhile, at heavyweight. We're now on day six of an interview that is growing old with statements made by John Jones that he is ready, but his phone is not ringing. The only thing he needs to happen before he gets in there and fight is somebody from the UFC has to call him and tell him they would like him to come out and fight. It's very different. And I can think of quite a few guys to get in there with John Jones that would be very interesting. Tied to Ivasa with the, the record, the ranking, the shoey. The entire nation behind him? Yeah, that's a big deal. He's going to sit just fine on a poster. Not to mention, he's about to be in there with the former interim champion. If Ty gets the jump on Surreal Gone, which skill for skill, forget it. This is a cage fighter. This is the modern era Tank Abbott. If he gets the jump on Surreal, it likely means because he knocked out Surreal, his star is going to be even higher. And all of a sudden, matches and standing opposite the Wonder Boy start to make a lot more sense. And as you're making sense, you're creating other fights, and time goes by, and now other guys, their cream is rising to the top. But you can do it the slow path, which is the path that John Jones and the rest of the heavyweights are doing, which is absolutely nothing. And eventually, my phone will ring, and I guess that's my marching horse. Or you can do what Chandler did, and you can line up a whole goddamn card today over breakfast that every fan in the world wants to see and every promoter out there is going to be very compelled, take a good look at, and possibly book.